welcome to Work Life by Design. I'm your host, Mel Marsden. As a passionate entrepreneur with a desire to create places where people and business thrive, I hope to inspire you to find your place at work and in life so you can live a life by design. You'll hear stories of transformation, exploring everything from organizational psychology to brand and identifying opportunities in your workplace and your life to inspire your human potential. So let's get started. Hello, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Work Life by Design. I really appreciate you tuning in. One of the things that I see quite a bit is beautifully designed workplaces that just don't work. They have gorgeous carpets, they've got beautiful timber veneers, they might have lovely fabrics, and they've probably cost quite a lot to build them, but they really just don't function. Now, there's quite a number of reasons why your workplace doesn't work. And much of it has to do with the layout. So when we talk about the layout, it could be the building. So it could be the shape of the building. Maybe it's too square. Maybe it's too long. Maybe it's an awkward, unusual shape. Maybe the location of the core. So that's where the toilets and the lift shafts and all of those sorts of centralized building activities happen. Sometimes they're in the middle. Sometimes they're a split core. Sometimes they're a side core. So sometimes the location of the core itself can actually be becoming a problem. Or maybe the building has a lot of columns. They might be an awkward shape. There might be a lot of them or they might be really, really big. The other thing that it might have to do with is actual fit out. So the types of spaces that you have, so whether it's meeting rooms, workstations, kitchens, those sorts of spaces and what that configuration looks like or that you don't have enough of those particular ones. It might be the connection of spaces, so how one space connects to another. It might be physical barriers, so there might be actual walls or rooms that block communication flow from one team to another. Could also be the amenities and facilities or lack thereof in your workplace. So do you have a really great kitchen or do you have the right amenities and facilities such as utility spaces or breakout spaces or collaboration areas to really support the type and style of business that you are running. Now, what happens is often clients really underestimate the impact of interrogating their brief. So they do what they always have done because it's familiar, it's comfortable and don't really know what they don't know. So they don't know that there's another way of doing things because this is the way that we've always operated our business. This is the way that we've always functioned and we don't know that there's a different way or perhaps a better way that we could be looking at to really enhance the performance of our business. So what they do is they go and they approach a designer or a builder and they say, I want this many workstations and this many offices and this many meeting rooms. And we think this is a really good place on the floor plan for the boardroom to go. And we think the offices should run over here and the kitchen should be over there. And so what then happens is the designer or the builder go, yep, no problems. We'll comply with that. And off they go and they put those elements and they fit them onto the floor plan and they go away and they build it. Now, they may be able to make this look absolutely amazing with the latest on trend materials and finishes and colors and while it looks absolutely beautiful but when they move in and the novelty of a new space wears off they start to find some issues the teams have difficulty communicating information flow slows down silos begin to form and you start to see little clicks occurring within the business the teams are less productive because it's actually hard for them to do their job Perhaps they don't have the right work point settings to do their work. So maybe they don't have the actual physical spaces that they need to facilitate them to be able to work in a way that works for them. Perhaps there isn't the right balance of collaborative settings to private focused work settings. And maybe the team are complaining about it being too noisy or too disruptive. So all of these challenges that you start to see in your workplace are outcomes of a workplace design that whilst it may look amazing, It hasn't established the foundations of what the workplace is required to do. Now, your workplace is an asset for your business. It needs to perform just as you would expect any other asset to. You are investing in this space and you expect a return on that investment. And that return comes from the enhanced productivity, happiness, and therefore the performance of your people. So how do we go about establishing this foundation? Well, 
you need to create a workplace strategy. Now, often people come to me and they go, I don't understand. What is a workplace strategy? So a workplace strategy is really a set of guiding principles that outlines what your workplace is to achieve in the context of supporting your people and your business to perform at their highest level. So some of the things that your workplace strategy will need to look at and incorporate is who the people are that work in your organization. What are the roles that they do? What are the tasks that they need to perform? How do these spaces then need to require to support them to do those tasks? What are the personalities of the employees that work in your business? Are they extroverted? Are they introverted? Are they predominantly male or female? Is there a broad generational mix or is it heavier in a particular age bracket? What are the particular furniture styles that you're then going to need to encourage and influence particular types and styles of communication? All of these things are important to understand because they actually enable people to do their work that they need to do and to do it well, to do it efficiently and to be very productive. We also want to know who they talk to. So how does organizational communication flow? How do we create efficiency and transfer of that information across the business? So which team needs to talk to this team? Which teams need more quiet space and which teams need more collaborative and noisier space. So really understanding those dynamics is what's then going to feed back into creating a workplace that is going to perform for your business. We also need to look at brand. Now, often we think about brand as whatever our logo it looks like and what our feature wall colors are going to be and we start sticking them around the office. But your brand is actually far more than that. It's about the experience that you want people to have when they do business with you. When they come to visit you, how do you want them to feel? When an employee arrives at work every day, how do you want them to feel? All of this is creating your brand experience. We also want to look at your values. Now, often people say to me, why as a designer do you need to understand what my organizational values are? And the reason is because when I know what's important in your organization, we can then drill down to understand what are the behaviors that you would expect to see from your people if you knew that they were operating in a way that aligned with those behaviors. So when you can actually articulate this, you can start to influence how people behave because of the connectivity of the spaces, the types and styles of spaces that we put in, and also the furniture. So if you want to encourage more robust collaboration in your business, put in more stand-up tables activated with whiteboards. Because what that's doing is it's keeping people energized and engaged because they're standing. It's enabling them to connect and communicate in an active way and that they can physically move and draw on a whiteboard. All of these elements activate people and create more of that collaborative, robust conversation. We also want to look at their well-being. So how do you want to support them as an organization from a physical, mental and an emotional perspective? Now, often we think about well-being in the workplace as only a physical element. So often we think of step count challenges or fruit boxes. However, there are many, many more ways that your workplace can begin to support employees mentally and emotionally as well. So if we start to think about creating quiet spaces and places for respite, maybe you've just had a really tough phone call and you just need a few minutes to collect yourself and you need to be able to do that somewhere other than the toilets. Because these are natural emotional states that we end up in through the course of our work. And sometimes we just need somewhere that we can take a moment and we can reset ourselves. So having the ability to do that within our spaces means that we need to be thinking about this and providing for them. We also need to be thinking about things emotionally too. It's about ensuring that we have that sense of belonging at work, that I feel like I'm part of a team. And that can really be heavily influenced by the style and the design of your workplace. So by encouraging connection and socialization, we can help our employees form stronger bonds because we are bumping into each other in the kitchen and grabbing a coffee and having a chat about how our weekend was and activating conversations outside of what our work requirements are to build more personal relationships which will only strengthen our professional relationships and our ability to work together. Another thing that we want to look at is our technology. How does the technology in your workplace work? 
Do you have desktop PCs? Do you have thin clients? Do you have laptops? What is the actual technology that each individual person in your business needs to perform their role? Sometimes we have organizations that have really robust computer processing requirements because of the particular style of work that individuals and particular roles require to perform while others can be really quite mobile and agile and just using a laptop. So understanding those complexities of the types of roles that we have and therefore the type of technology that each individual needs, all of that is going to play into how we can then design and create a workplace environment to enable that. You also need to start to think about, well, are we Wi-Fi enabled or do we need to be cabled? If we're going to start looking at going down an agile desk route and having unallocated seating, Do we need a desk booking system or how are we going to manage our workplace capacity requirements? Do we have integrated AV that actually works? So can I walk into a meeting room and plug in my computer and have it project onto the screen easily or is it really difficult? So all of these technology requirements start to feed into what our experience of work is and how we can create our workplace. Now, when we bring all of these elements together, What they're doing is they're combining to deliver an experience for your employees. And it's this experience that will see your employees either become engaged or disengaged and leave. Now, I say this is whilst the work environment is just one factor in creating an amazing place to work, it is the physical representation of what your organization stands for, what you are prepared to invest your money in and for what. It's the space that communicates how you do business, how you care about each other and how the organization is prepared to support and enable their people to do their best work. Now, often when I come into a workplace, it's really evident to me what some of the foundational issues are that an organization is experiencing because I can see them from how the space is laid out, how people are interacting, how people are communicating. It's obvious to me because I can see the way that the workplace is creating physical barriers. There might be a lack of atmosphere. We're really not communicating those values. We're not enabling those behaviors. So there are sorts of challenges that I do see in workplaces. Now, if you're experiencing some of these challenges in your workplace and you like the sound of how a great workplace can begin to transform your business, there are a couple of options. So the first one is you can take yourself through this process and you can begin to map this out on your own. And you can do that with some guidance by enrolling in the Your Workplace Future Ready program. So this is a seven week online program where you can take yourself through each of the five pillars that underpin the Workplace Dynamics Blueprint to transform your workplace for the future. Now, I'll pop all the links for these in the show notes below, but that's the first option you've got. And that's the do it yourself version. The second option is the Workplace Dynamics Blueprint Audit. Now, this is a light desktop version opportunity for us to have a look at your organization. And it's a bit of a chance for you to dip your toe in the water and see if this is something that might work for your business. We can have a look at what's going on and we can give you a few dot points on how you can start to transform that. Or the third option is you go the whole way and we do the Workplace Dynamics Blueprint. Now, this is the full solution to see your workplace transform and to create an environment for high performance. We take you through the whole process. We do all of the surveys, the interviews. We engage with your team. We analyze your business. We look at your culture. We look at your values. And then we make recommendations on how you can begin to enhance your environment to create a high performing team. Now, if you're not sure which one of these is the one that you need, feel free to book a call with me and I'd be really happy to have a chat and discuss your options with you and see what's going to work for your business so that you can start to create an environment that actually works for your business. No longer do you need to have your environment being this liability for your business and somewhere that your people don't enjoy coming to work every day. Let's change that and let's make it something that works for you and it becomes a talent and attraction magnet for your business. So thank you so much for joining me again this week and I look forward to chatting with you again next week. Thank you for joining me for Work Life by Design. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to rate, review or subscribe or all three in iTunes and share it with your friends so we can continue to build this community. 
I would love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts, questions or suggestions, you can connect with me on Instagram at Melma or send me an email at melissa at melissamarsden.com.au. I hope this episode has given you a few sparks of inspiration so you can design a work life you love.